assalamu alaikum everyone so i am here with another lecture on fob q classification uh, in which we will discuss different grids according to the different uh, compartments of prolapse and i will try to explain how the candidates have to explain the grids uh, because in tos and in oski stations uh, the examiners ask to explain a particular grid like uh, what uh, do you assess on this grid and how will you explain what problems this woman has so uh, according to that i will explain that how a grid should be explained so continuing with my uh, today's lecture okay so now starting with the staging so to understand the grids and exactly where the defect is and how to quantify that defect you must know first about the staging so you should uh, learn and memorize the staging uh, in the exams so stage 0 is no prolapse if no prolapse is demonstrated points a a b a c d a p and b p are all less than or equals to minus 3 cm which is the fixed uh, point so this is stage 0 stage 1 the most distal portion of the prolapse is more than 1 cm above the level of the hymen means it should be less than minus 1 if all these points a a b a c d a p and b p are all 1 cm above the hymen means they are at minus 1 then this is stage 1 stage 2 the most distal portion of the prolapse is situated between 1 cm above and 1 cm below means the measurement should be between minus 1 and plus 1 in relation to the hymen if these points are 1 cm above the hymen they will be measured minus 1 if at the level of the hymen 0 or if 1 cm below then plus 1 if stage 2 measurements cannot go beyond plus 1 cm stage 3 the most distal portion of the prolapse is more than 1 cm beyond the plane of the hymen but not completely averted meaning no value is greater than or equal to total vaginal length minus 2 cm any of the points a a b a c d a p b p is greater than or equal to plus 2 and less than or equal to tbl means total vaginal length minus 3 cm so you have to understand a bit this point uh what is total vaginal length minus 3 total vaginal length is 9 cm if we minus 3 cm from 9 then the answer would be 6 cm so any of these points they can lie in between plus 2 means below the 2 cm below the hymen and plus 6 they should not go beyond tvl minus 3 which is plus 6 cm so the measurements should lie in between plus 2 and plus 6 cm if they become uh, suppose any of the, these points they lie at 7 cm suppose if uh, uh, pouch of douglas is 7 cm outside the hymen then this would be plus 7 so this will come in stage 4 not in stage 3 so stage 3 limitation is tvl less than or equals to total vaginal length minus 3 cm now coming towards stage 4 complete aversion or aversion to within 2 cm of total vaginal length of the lower genital tract is demonstrated any of the points b a c d or b p is greater than or equal to tvl minus 2 what is tvl minus 2 total vaginal length is 9 cm and if we minus 2 cm from 9 then the answer would be 7 so 7 or beyond is stage 4 means 6 or beyond is stage 4 Uh, if it comes up to 6 then it lies in stage 3 but after 6 and beyond is stage 4 so this is a simple uh, way to memorize the staging of pop q classification okay now how to examine a patient when you are uh, doing pop q classification so the position should be left lateral dorsal lithotomy position at the end of the couch first of all you have to identify the hymenal remnants or hymen where is the hymen because this is the reference point which is zero point insert the stent speculum and depress the posterior vaginal wall and ask the patient to push now you have to ask the patient to push and uh, uh, then again uh, you will ask the patient that is it the maximum bulge or prolapse you feel whenever uh, you feel something coming out of vagina so now using a ruler measure the point a a b a and c uh, minus if above zero at the level and plus if below the hymen which uh, we have discussed in the staging 
and the first of all you have to mark you have to mark the fixed point that is aa and ap you have to mark uh, 3 cm above the hymen aa and 3 cm uh, in the on the anterior vaginal wall and 3 cm above the hymen ap above at the posterior vaginal wall now turn the sims speculum and depress anterior vaginal wall and ask the patient to push now you are assessing posterior vaginal wall prolapse so you have to use a single speculum either you are assessing anterior vaginal wall prolapse or posterior uh, nowadays examiners uh, they mind if uh, you insert two instruments uh, in the vagina of a patient so uh, first you have to retract posterior vaginal wall and assess the anterior vaginal wall prolapse and then retract the anterior vaginal wall and assess the posterior vaginal wall prolapse take the speculum out and measure the genital hydrus and perineal body using the ruler ruler now reduce the prolapse fully and measure the distance of cuff or the posterior fornix from the hymen which is total vaginal length yes which we discussed in previous lecture that total vaginal length will be measured in reduced state as well as aa and ap markings now ask the patient to stand and bear down confirm the descent of prolapse in relation to the hymen now stage the prolapse anterior posterior uterus or vault what is this pop q anterior vaginal wall plus cervical cuff check for cystocele uterine prolapse what you are looking at anterior vaginal wall you are looking for anterior vaginal wall prolapse you are looking for cystocele you are looking for cervix or if no uterus is present then you are looking for cuff of vagina in posterior vaginal wall you are looking for wall prolapse and posterior fornix uh, rectocele as well uh, pop q does not give you measurements of uh, anterocele uh, confirm for findings on standing and then you have to stage the prolapse and this is the grid you have to record according to your examination this is the standard practice for assessing the pelvic floor prolapse okay so now these are our first two grids uh, which we will discuss and then we will know the answers so uh, in this grid you can see aa is at zero uh, you can see that it has come slightly down because the fixed point for AA is minus 3 so it should be there BA is also 0 both of these are at the level of hymen because 0 is the level of hymen C is minus 6 you can see cervix is well supported and it is at its place genital height is 4 cm which is normal for it perineal body 4 cm total vaginal length 9 cm all of them are according to their normal values now AP is minus 3 which is a fixed point for uh, AP posterior vaginal wall fixed point and there is no coming down of AP BP is also minus 3 it is also intact and pouch of Douglas is minus 8 so the only problem in this grid is anterior vaginal wall prolapse uh, which is at the level of 0 now this is our second grid in second grid you can see AA minus 3 which is uh, okay for its uh, position BA minus 3 also at its position cervix minus 6 it is also well supported so no no uh, defect in the anterior vaginal wall and the cervix genital height is 4 cm it is also normal perineal body 4 cm total vaginal length 9 cm our middle grid is also normal now coming towards the uh, third uh, compartment AP 0 it has come down BP 0 both of the posterior vaginal wall markings have come down at the level of the hymen because 0 is the level of hymen and pouch of Douglas minus 8 it is at its normal position so now let's see the answers of these grids okay so as you can see our grid number one answer this grid is showing anterior vaginal wall prolapse as both AA and BA are at 0 point her uterus and cervix are well supported as C point is at minus 6 she has normal width of genital hiatus and intact perineal body her vaginal length is intact and she has no posterior vaginal wall prolapse this is stage 2 anterior vaginal wall prolapse so this is anterior vaginal wall prolapse we knew uh, as we discussed the grid but what is the stage stage is 2 because the measurements are in between minus 1 and plus 1 so this is the answer for grade, uh, grid 1 uh, this is the way to answer the examiner because most of the students they ask that how to answer the examiner when they show our, uh, us different grids so this is the way you have to answer the examiner then further they can ask uh, what uh, will be your next plan and how will you plan her uh, uh, what will be your management in other lectures we will discuss accordingly grid number two this grid is showing well supported anterior vaginal wall uterus and cervix she has normal width of genital hiatus and intact perineal body her vaginal length is intact though she has stage 2 posterior vaginal wall prolapse as both AP and BP are at 0 point 
so you have understood that both of these are a stage 2 prolapse but but, uh, but uh, this is the prolapse of anterior vaginal wall and this is a prolapse of posterior vaginal wall okay so now our third grid this is our third grid in third grid you can see aa is at plus 3 means aa has come down from its fixed position of minus 3 BA is plus 5. It has come further down. This is BA, the most distal portion of anterior vaginal wall. And this is C. So you can see, I explained in my previous lecture that you have to leave 2 cm of cervix and then the most distal portion of anterior vaginal wall is BA. But after leaving 2 cm of cervix. So this is C. C is plus 7 means her cervix is also descended down. So, all of our anterior vaginal wall and cervix is down along with the uterus, definitely. Genital height is 4 cm. This is normal. Perineal body is also normal, 4. And total vaginal length is 9. This middle grid is normal. AP plus 3. It has also come down from its normal position of minus 3. BP plus 5. So, this is the most distal portion of posterior vaginal wall which is BB and this is our pouch of Douglas so when you insert the speculum or a scale you will not you can, cannot go inside more than this because all of the posterior vaginal wall is also out so this is the most downward point of uh, posterior vaginal wall is point B which is plus 7 okay so this is the posterior vaginal wall this is anterior vaginal wall this is cervix and this is uterus so she has a version of whole of the uterus and cervix along with the anterior and posterior vaginal wall. So let's see what is our answer now. This grid is showing both anterior and posterior vaginal wall prolapse as the fixed points AA and AP are at plus 3 cm. The most distal points of anterior and posterior vaginal wall are at plus 5 cm. She also has uterine which, which are BA and BB. She also has uterine and cervical descent as C point is at plus 7 D point is at plus 7 which shows major utero cervical descent. These findings correspond with stage 4. Now what is the stage? I explained to you previously that whatever comes in between plus 2 up to plus 6 this lies in stage 3 but this is plus 7. If any of the point go beyond plus 6 cm this will come in stage 4. So as our C and D points are at plus 7 this means that this is stage 4 pelvic organ prolapse. I hope you have understood the uh, way of staging the prolapse now. Okay, so now this is our another grid. What is something different in this grid that there is no D point which means the patient has had her hysterectomy done. Okay, so uh, if she had her hysterectomy then the D point is absent and C becomes cuff of vagina. Now AA is minus 3. You can see here is AA. BA is also minus 3. Both are well supported and are at, at are the normal position. C means cuff of vagina minus 6 which means there is no vault prolapse. 4.5 genital hiatus. Genital hiatus is wide. Perineal body is short. This is 1 cm. Total vagina length 8. Slightly reduced. AP is plus 2 which is down its normal position is minus 3 so it is out from the hymen this is her hymen and AP is slightly out from the hymen this is plus 2 BP is plus 5 this is BP so she has significant posterior vaginal wall prolapse and but her vault of vagina and anterior vaginal wall is well supported uh, and total vaginal length is slightly short as well but and short perineal body as well so you can easily answer now that what would be her stage her stage would be stage 3 because none of her measurements are going beyond uh, plus 6 centimeter the maximum one is plus 5 so her stage is stage 3 now let's see the answer of this grid this grid is of a woman with no uterus as there is no point d Anterior vaginal wall is well supported as both AA and BA are at minus 3 cm. She has well supported vault of vagina as vaginal cuff is at minus 6. She has poor apical support because uh, whenever there is defect in the genital hiatus and perineal body, this means the apical support has gone which is provided by arcus tendinous fissure and perineal body. As genital hiatus is wide and perineal body is short, 
she has posterior vaginal wall prolapse as AP is plus 2 cm and BP is at plus 5. These findings correspond with stage 3 posterior vaginal wall prolapse. Okay. So, I think this is our last grid which we will discuss. So, this grid shows AA plus 3, BA plus 5 cuff of vagina plus 6 again this is the grid of a patient of a woman who has no uterus no pouch of tongue you can see no d point genital head is 4 cm perineal body 2 cm total gen length 5 this is short perineal body is also short but genital head this is normal ap posterior vaginal wall plus 2 bp plus 4 she also has posterior vaginal wall collapse as well as anterior vaginal wall prolapse and wall prolapse short vagina as well so she has multiple problems but again none of her points are going beyond plus six this means this also lies in stage three okay so the answer of this grid is this grid is of a woman with no uterus as there is no point d she has anterior vaginal wall prolapse as aa is at plus three and ba is at plus five she has wall prolapse as vaginal cuff is at plus 6 cm. Her vagina is short as total vaginal length is 5 cm. She also has posterior vaginal wall prolapse as AP is plus 3 and BP is plus 4. These findings correspond with stage 3, vault, anterior and posterior vaginal wall prolapse. So I wish and I hope that, uh, that to understand it uh, has become a bit easier for you after this lecture. And uh, uh, next time we will be discussing different management options according to the grids because this can also come in exams that uh, the examiner can give you a grid and ask you now how will you manage what is the problem and how will you manage her now so we will discuss different management options in our other lectures uh, Jazakallah and thank you so much for now and uh, I'm signing off with the hope that uh, I think PopQ will become uh, a bit easier for you all to understand after these lectures. Thank you so much.